Hi, welcome to Tessera's Nerf Room. So today we're going to be talking about a list that I've been kind of afraid to make for a while because I have some controversial takes on here, and this is the top 10 most overrated Nerf Blasters. People really get defensive over which blasters are overrated and underrated. I've kind of been worried to express my opinion on these blasters, but I do truly think that a lot of these are just seriously overrated. And today I'm going to share with you the ones that I personally feel are overrated. So with all that said, let's get into the number 10 spot. Number 10, we have the Nerf Rough Cut. This is a blaster that is pretty good, but isn't honestly as good as people say it is. It is relatively comfortable and good looking, but it just doesn't do it for me. Honestly, a better version of this blaster would be the Warden released in the Elite 2.0 series, as that blaster had better ergonomics, a better pricing, and overall better internals than this one. This blaster is seriously not the best thing I've ever seen in the world, but it does get the job done. I just think that it's overrated and people talk too much about it. At number 9 is the N-Strike Long Shot. This blaster seems like a cool idea on the surface, but just doesn't really do that much to begin with. I mean, yeah, it's good for modding, I suppose, but out of the box, it just doesn't offer anything. Like, it's this giant clunky blaster. Like, just get a Retaliator. The Retaliator came out at the same time as this one did, so you could just go and get a Retaliator instead, and the Retaliator is smaller and better in every single possible reasonable way. This blaster is plagued by one really big issue. It's calling itself a sniper rifle and this barrel isn't long enough. The fact that the barrel isn't long enough and that it's so clunky means that it's not a sniper rifle and thus false advertising. This blaster really sucks just because of that reason alone and I can't recommend anybody take a look at it yet. People really love this blaster, and it is one of the most praised blasters ever. And that really annoys me, because the long shot isn't a long shot. It's just a shot. What are you thinking, Hasbro? False advertising. At number eight is the rival Nemesis. This blaster seems like it should be really cool because it's a fully automatic 100 round hopper fed monstrosity, but the problem is it's too big and it's too heavy and I just don't like it because it's just too clunky and it's, it's hard to hold and it sucks. And it's like, it weighs like 500 pounds. Unironically, 100%, it weighs 500 pounds. And this blaster is actually terrible to try and use on the battlefield because of how heavy it is and the fact that it really just doesn't work. Plus, it's just so uncomfortable. Like, look at this ergonomic smooth grip. It's just, oh, it's terrible. The stock is awful. Just, oh my gosh, it sucks. I can't recommend anybody take a look at this blaster. It's just, it's not good. And plus, it's like $100. It's too expensive. I don't like it. I would rather take the Percy's because the Percy's is smaller and it's more compact. Let's move on to the number seven spot. At number seven is the Nerf Sling Fire. This blaster is pretty cool looking. Yeah, it is. But the problem is that the Scravenger exists. And just like the problem with the long shot, the Scravenger came out at the exact same time as this did. It didn't release like five or 10 years later. It released at the same time. And the Scravenger is so much better in every single way. I mean, the Scravenger, you can't do this with. Why would you ever want to do that with anything? You can't do that on the Scravenger. You can only do that with this one. So it's just so useless. I mean, so what if that looks cool and feels really good? So what if the Prime on this is better than the Scravenger? The Scravenger's obviously better in every single way, and this blaster just doesn't have any reason to exist at all. It truly is overrated, and I can't understand why so many people love this blaster so much and give it such high praise and it, as a zombie strike blaster and as just a standalone nerf blaster. I can't see it. The scavenger is better. You can't change my mind. At number six is the elite rapid strike. And this comes down to the exact same problem. Both the Hyperfire and the Infinite were released way before this one was. This was a 2025 release out of Hasbro, and both of those other blasters came out all the way back in like 2003. Both of those blasters are so much better than this one in every single way. The Hyperfire has an inferior conveyor belt mechanism, but it shoots faster, so that makes it better. And the Infinite has an automatic loading system, which completely excuses how gigantic the blaster is. 
This blaster totally isn't streamlined at all, and it doesn't look good or feel good when you're holding it in any way. Just go with one of the other ones. This blaster isn't worth the money, especially nowadays. Hasbro wants $70 for the Rapid Strike. How can they charge $70 for a Rapid Strike? The blaster retailed for like 50 bucks when it came out, and actually no, it retailed for 40 bucks when it came out. So how come they're selling it for 70 now, and the color scheme that they're doing now is inferior because they didn't even bother to paint the stock, which is ridiculous because the stock is part of the whole personality. I need to shut up. At number five is the entire Enforce series. Nerf Melee has gotten so much better than Enforce. I mean, like, look at this. This is so much better in every single way. It's got a plastic grip and it doesn't have a core to it, so it just flops around like it's nobody's business. This thing sucks. This thing's made like out of stuff and it's rigid and you can actually like swing it around effectively and it's got good weighting to it and the foam is superior to newer stuff in every single way. Why would anybody buy this? It doesn't make any sense. Also, this, I believe, retailed for about $20, which is exactly the same price as that sword that I was just holding. So obviously, the sword is a better value in every single way. Enforce just doesn't have a reason to exist anymore. Like, like that is better. Just go with the new stuff, because Hasbro always improves upon the stuff that they came out with long ago. They don't ruin it at all. Elite 2.0 was a great series. At number four is the Stampede. You might be wondering why this blaster is on the list because this is a pretty beloved blaster. It is, but it has two big problems. It's old, so it doesn't shoot that hard and it shoots slow. It doesn't shoot fast enough for me. I want this blaster to shoot faster. And because it can't shoot faster, it objectively sucks. It's objectively inferior to everything else in the entire world. This thing doesn't do anything at all. It doesn't shoot fast enough. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. And the weighting is all over the place. Okay, that's genuinely true. The weighting of this thing kind of sucks. But the, the, the blaster is so bad. It's so bad. You can't hold it right. You can't shoot it right. It shoots so slow. Like, like here, let me, let me demonstrate the rate of fire it has putting a Busby mag into it. That's too slow. It has to be faster. It has to be faster for me. At number three is the Nerf Pro Strife X. Who cares if this is an innovation? Who cares if this thing is actually an optimal design for a Nerf Strife system to be put in together? Who cares if it uses a LiPo? Who cares if it's shooting short darts? And who cares if it's shooting like 170 FPS out of the box? It's not exactly the same as the original Strife, so it's bad. And it's missing the barrel lug. I can't justify the price because it's missing a barrel lug. I, I, I There are actually reasons why the barrel lug would be worse, like, if it were on there. But it doesn't matter. I want a barrel lug. And I want a barrel lug right now. Also, the mag release sucks. It's too far away. It, it's, it's not like the worker mag releases were put like this in, in the same way anyway. Uh, also, the rev trigger sucks. And it, it just, it, it sucks, it sucks, it's $120, why can't it be cheaper? Like if this was like $50, it would be overpriced. Make it the exact same retail price as the Stripe. You do that and I'll be happy, but I'm not happy because it costs too much money. Number two might sound like a controversial take because, well, I already talked about how this blaster is better than the long shot earlier, but it's the Retaliator. And honestly, I don't know which one is better because they're both just terrible, terrible blasters. This blaster is not small. It's gigantic. It's the size of the Titan CS50. It also doesn't have a very good grip. It just feels so weird and the trigger pull isn't responsible and it has this weird top prime that isn't well designed at all. It's just not a good blaster. You can't even flip it. I don't even know what you're supposed to do with it. You can't flip it. You can't run 18 round magazines through it because of the stupid mag well the way it's designed. Just meh, go buy an Echo. Go buy an Echo instead. The Echo is so much better. And number one is the Strife. This blaster pisses me off. And I can't understand why so many people like it. Because here's the thing. The Thunderbolt is obviously better when you get it out of the box because the Thunderbolt has Dirt Zone's logo on it and it doesn't say Nerf on it. And on top of that, the Thunderbolt is shooting 100 FPS. That makes the Thunderbolt better than the Strife in every single way. Never mind the fact that with about five minutes of modding, you can take all of the annoying locks out and lubricate the trigger to make it absolute perfection. 
It doesn't matter. The Thunderbolt's better. I don't feel like opening the blaster and doing anything with it. I feel like having Hasbro do all the work for me. This blaster sucks because Hasbro didn't do enough of the things for me. I have to do something myself. It's too hard for me to do. I don't like this blaster. It sucks. It doesn't look good. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't work good. It's terrible. It absolutely is awful. Just go buy a Thunderbolt. Go buy a Spectrum. The Spectrum's so much better. Why can't it be more like Kimmy? Where you just go and you get the Spectrum. The Spectrum's been running circles around this drive. The Spectrum is only two years old. This thing was going way back in 2013. Why can't this thing be better than the Spectrum? The Spectrum is new. The Spectrum's better. The Phoenix is new. The Phoenix is better. Go get a Nerf Elite 2.0 Phoenix. Don't buy the Strike. The Strike is not worth your money. <laughs> Happy April Fool's Day, everybody. <laughs> My actual list will be coming out in a few days. Thanks for watching. Bye.